joining us now with more on what Occidental Petroleum shareholders may face in 2024. Let's bring in Portfolio Wealth Advisors President and CIO Lee Munson. Lee, it is good to see you here. So Occidental CEO Vicki Holub talking about this acquisition of Crown Rock. Lee uh, Holub saying, listen, this was about scale. It was about efficiency. It was about improving inventory. Uh, what do you think, Lee, of that acquisition? You believe it was is a smart move to make strategically and financially? Well, the, the strategy there it makes me shake my head a little bit. You know, when you look at the timing of early December when they made this acquisition, just 30 do, 32 days prior when they had quarterly reports, you know, management said that they weren't looking for any uh, acquisitions, that the Anadarko was fine and that they had two billion of synergies. And so it's funny that 30 days later, they bust out and say, oh, we're going to have to stop buybacks. Uh, we're now a dividend growth story. We just, you know, paid billions and billions of dollars for this new company. And, you know, the 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 narrative is fine. You know, they want to do what they've done the premiums. I, I, I get that, but I kind of wonder if they're, why is it that they said they weren't going to do it and now they are? Secondly, um, all this direct air capture and the carbon capture stuff, she's not able to answer the question of when it's going to be profitable. You know, there's this this thing in aviation, it's it's called Corsica, and it, it it's going to be in 2027 where you're, they're going to be buying carbon offsets and stuff. This is just a couple years away. So I think the fact that we were on schedule having 60% of a $3 billion buyback get done, shareholders were told, hey, listen, we're going to be buying back. We're going to be paying down debt. We're not going to do any other acquisitions. In fact, we're going to look in the premium basin to sell some gas properties that aren't really key to what we want to do to fund buybacks. And now that's just off the table 30 days after they said that was the plan a few months ago. So for me, this stock is a real wait and see. Um, I understand that the CEO thinks it's very undervalued and it may remain undervalued. I'd rather wait to see what happens with the price of oil. We presume that it's just going to be here or go higher. I'd rather see the price of oil decline. If we're going to have a slowing growth this year, I want to see what the effects are. So I'm right now, I'm out of the stock right now. I love to watch it. I think mm -hmm. Vicky's a great CEO but it's a wait and see. Well, it's interesting because I hear you really honing in on this change after 30 days, and that's something that you can get a lot of clarity on when you get the opportunity to speak with a leader. What was the change in thinking? Was there anything from her comments that you just heard that gave you a little more clarity on that shift in movement? Yeah, I mean, I understand what they're trying to do now. They're trying to you know, increase the reserves. What they're trying to do is, you know, is here's what they're trying to do. They're trying to acquire stuff that they can finance with some debt mm -hmm. and immediately say, we can improve uh, sh shareholder value by, by increasing dividends. That's not what I want to hear. You know, I, I understand what she's saying. I think it sounds like a good strategy, but that's not why I own the stock. And that's not what I think is going to make things good move forward. If the business was strong, if their setup was good, I don't think they would have to make this acquisition. I would have preferred that Vicky said something like, we weren't planning on doing this at all, but we got this incredible deal. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't resist the price. The price was right, we did it, but it comes off like this was always the strategy. And that's, that's to me, that's a tell that tells me, I just want to take a break from the stock for a little while. Hey, Lee, I'll get you out of this. What about the fact that, you know, you got Warren Buffett uh, carving out a stake in this one, the Oracle himself, Lee, you know, greatest value investor of all time. How does that, if at all, play into kind of your assessment of this company? Oh, it was one of the main reasons why I uh, identified the stock. It was one of the main reasons why I bought it. You know, last year, I think I might have bought some in 22, 23. I forgot exactly the day I, I first started purchasing it. But, you know, Warren Buffett's a great idea generator. Right. And and I think that there is a thought over a year ago that he represented a floor on the price. And but the problem is, is that the stock isn't moving. It's not making much money. They've subtly changed directions. Of course, it all sounds very good, but I don't see the energy. Right. And so, you know, Warren Buffett's a very, very long, long term investor. I, again, I would rather wait for the price of the stock to start moving up. I'd rather like to see when the share buybacks start coming back. I'd like to see how much money we're wasting on direct air uh, capture and to see if that's even something that's going to grow and move the needle. If not, it's just wasting my time. I would rather have a more pure play. So at this point, I understand why Buffett was interested. Today, I'm on my own and that has less bearing.